I was listening to the 1v1 therapy video I had, and I thought it was interesting that I remember saying in a video about a year or two ago that I don't know a single person under 35 who has life figured out. And don't get it twisted. Just because you have money, it doesn't mean you have life figured out. Or don't think just because you're overly critical about how the social economic system works, it means you figure things out. What I mean by figuring it out, it's somebody who essentially accomplished every aspect of life to a stable percentage. They say your 20s is supposed to be the greatest years of your life. But all I've experienced and seen others experience is just, I don't know, people complaining about struggling, struggling with college, affordable rent, living conditions, the price of food. A lot of people got identity issues. And even we struggle to find happiness and resolve with our own mental health. I don't know what happened, but when I was in high school, everything seemed affordable, even when I thought about it from an adult perspective. But due to inflation, the moment I started doing adult things, everything became so expensive. Back in the day, you were able to get a job and be able to afford an apartment for yourself and basically not have to spend $150 on groceries that only last for a week. It's just inconvenient. When it became our turn to become an adult, everything becomes expensive. I sent a picture to my mom this, uh, this morning and I'll put it on the screen right now. I remember this. These cheeseburgers were legit a single dollar and it had more in it. These cheeseburgers nowadays, now, now, nowadays, nowadays are tiny and cost a lot more. And yo, if I had a kid nowadays, man, I would tell this little baby to stop your Google Gaga, Gigi Google, shut your bitch ass up, start talking real estate, nigga, make your dad rich. You know what's funny? Some people really do that though. They're like, man, when I have kids, I'm gonna have kids just so I can shove them in acting classes or a bunch of art classes or something like that so they could potentially go to Hollywood or you know, pay their parents' lifestyle. Imagine having a kid, he's like four years old, you put him in a real estate class. Now who paying the bills in a few years? If life worked that way, that would be crazy. But you know, on to jokes aside, everything's overpriced now. We got it bad in this generation. We really did. Everyone watching this video who has to pay bills and other expenses, you understand the pain. Our generation really got screwed over. This is why I always say to still live with your parents. I don't care what kind of bad relationship you have with them. You're not going to survive out there unless you're living in an apartment with like two other people, which might be okay if you're always out the house. But, you know, living in an apartment with two other people, I don't know where you're going to get your privacy from. You're sharing a bathroom with like many different people. You know what I'm saying? Yo, remember sometime last year, I made a video talking about how I was going to move out and I have enough income to where I can get an apartment, but here's my situation. One, my parents are never home. Like literally, they're always traveling for work. So I essentially have the house to myself. Is there a point of moving out then? I, at least I already have a place to myself, I understand. Number two, who is gonna take care of the dogs? <laughs> if I move out, my parents can't work because, or, or we have to give up the dogs. You know what I'm saying? Dogs can't be at home by themselves. They need they need owners to take care of them. I don't feel like we're not gonna hire a dog sitter. and. If I move out, I have to probably take the dogs with me or something like that. And then, you know, all that other stuff. It's a lot of semantics. Three, when I was researching for places to move into, unless you want a place in the hood, each place wants good credit. But I don't have good credit because I never owned the place to begin with. And that's like, you know, when people say like, how am I supposed to get a job if I don't have experience? But the job requires experience. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. It's like that loophole. And listen, going back to the good credit part that's my fault because i was never financially literate my school never taught me that my my parents always told me never use your credit card but you should use it because it would show proof that you actually pay your expenses off people like to see positive payment history and credit utilization there are other ways to increase your credit score too but the score that is required for a decent place in new york is insane they want your credit score so high that they're expecting you to be paying like you were like you were paying bills off on your credit card or building your credit score since you were 12 years old or something. Like we were talking about in the therapy video. I'll leave that video in the description, by the way, if I'm not lazy, that we were talking about. It's tough to find a place to live alone. And everybody with a full time job deserves the opportunity to have proper shelter and affordable expenses. And also the fourth reason going back to why I didn't move out is there's no point in just draining my money for something that is unnecessary. That's why I said, y'all should just stay home. When I moved out the first time, I was upset because this is when the inflation and the prices just started going up. My ex-girlfriend and I couldn't afford it. There were, there are things that I got, things that I understood when I got older. Like for example, when I mentioned 
everything with inflation. I, I figured out that I should stop putting stop putting money in my bank accounts. Now, hear me out on this. I I don't want to, I want to say gamble, but I don't. It's kind of gambling. I gamble all my money in the stock in stocks and cryptocurrency. Why? Because it moves with the economy. Listen, stocks and Bitcoin crashes all the time. That's why people say don't put in that stuff. So does the economy, though. It's always going to go up with it. It's always going to go down with it. If you leave your money in a bank account, it's just going to collect dust and it's not going to move with the economy. You can put $1,000 in your bank account right now. And in 10 years, if you leave it there, it's going to be worth a lot less. This current time period is a perfect example. Ten dollars ten years ago is not worth ten dollars today. Ten dollars is barely anything. I feel bad for the next generation because I know it's going to be worth for y'all. These jobs are just not paying enough. Now, this is that's just I don't know if you hear my dog in the background drinking that water so viciously. You know, speak, see, this one talk. Who gonna fill the dog bowl up if the, with with water if I move out? You know what I'm saying? Like this type of stuff. But anyway. What I'm talking about so far is just the financial part, right? That's just one little part of it, though. The 20s being the greatest years of your life while we deal with this. Listen, it's been proven that people nowadays are suffering the most mentally. Forget money part. Depression is at an all-time high. Mental illness is a lot more relevant. People be like, man, when you're in your, 20, when you're in your 20s, you have your health. No, we don't. Maybe y'all, when y'all were in your 20s, you had your mental health. It's different now. People are having heavy burdens to deal with just inside their head. This is what people are not understanding. Because really think about this. I don't hear people talk about this enough. Your 20s, a lot of people need to overcome their teenage years. What do I mean by this? Let's say you got bullied as a teenager. You have to spend your 20s trying to resolve for that. Let's say during your teenage years, you were like me. And as a teenager in high school, let's say you were like me, you weren't social. Still to this day, I'm not social. You know how many times that actually hurt me in terms of business? Someone was just talking to me the other day on Instagram. They're like, yo, can I do the 1v1 therapy video with you as well? And a lot of people asked me to do that after that video. I, I be telling people, having social communication, like talking to people drains me. Emo it drains me. I get tired after I talk to people. It's really weird. Like, I'm just not social. I just don't like talking to people in general. I I'm sorry to say, I don't know. Listen, but that's me. And that's something I have to overcome. I used to be a lot worse, but I'm still learning to talk in front of crowds right now and, be and get over my social anxiety. Let's say the opposite though, right? Let's say you were a Chad in high school and you partied all the time. In your 20s, maybe people are too busy now to party and you're not that guy or girl anymore who's popular. I've seen that plenty of times. You were popular in high school and nobody cares about you in college or in the real world. My point is that after high school or your teenage years, reality shifts to where you're put in a situation to adjust your whole life. And most of us struggle to handle this. This is where the depression comes in or the anxiety. Adulthood is not easy. Transitioning to adulthood is not easy. Remember last video about that guy who had someone have a crush on them and they were transgender? Remember what I said in that video? I had a similar situation happen to me. And in my situation, there were they were like, Oh, I'm, I'm 21 years old. I'm an adult. I should be allowed to do this and that, but my parents don't allow this. And some of y'all were too busy bitching about the title of the video instead of hearing the heroic valor of this individual pushing to be someone they feel they should be. And I'm there emotionally supporting them despite them crushing on me later on. That's, that's part of the transition, no pun intended, to adulthood. Y'all complain about everything, though. This is why y'all be depressed about stuff. You look at the title of an article or a YouTube video, and you think only at the surface level because that's all you read or looked at, the thing at the surface. That's why it's surface level thinking. That's why a lot of us go through these problems. I'm a victim of it myself. I be thinking surface level about a lot of my issues, and it causes more mental strain, or it makes me invoke negative emotions towards something or somebody, even though it's not that deep. Like 85% of the things we worry about never happens. But we don't like to think that way. This is facts. Cornell University found this out in the study. 85% of the things we complain or fuss about or worry about never happens. Now, you finally have your freedom in your 20s to make decisions for yourself and even the smallest things you can make decisions for. Yo, man, I remember this is the first time I ever felt that adulthood shift. I remember my parents didn't allow me to get piercings all my life. I wanted to get ear piercings, right? I turned 18, boom, I got my ears pierced. And funny enough, when I got the second earlobe pierced, it got infected. 
because I was working a warehouse job and I was always dirty because I'm in the warehouse and my air got dirty while I was working. Everything is okay now, obviously, with my air. Like you, you wouldn't be able to tell I had an infection, but like I was stressed out. But like I said, small things like that are part of transitioning to adulthood. Just because you have freedom, it doesn't make the experience great. I thought I'll just get my ears pierced and that's it, y'all. It just opens new doors, which when you enter these doors, you see more doors and more doors. And eventually you go down different pathways and rabbit holes. And each door comes with positive and negative things. And like I was saying about the 85%, we look at different doors, but we don't even open them. But we're scared to open them. We might accidentally open them. You know what I'm saying? We work ourselves up. But here's the thing about this. And this goes back to what I was saying about what we don't think about. School doesn't teach us how to handle anxiety and not stress about the future or what ifs. Then when we turn into our 20s, we're mentally suffering because we're worrying about things that are what ifs. We're having anxiety about things. This is on top of all the financial changes I'm talking about. So there's so much to deal with and handle. Regardless, these are important years because being in your 20s is the hardest part of building resilience and self-discovery. Everybody has their own journey to deal with. And you may say the building of your resilience in your 20s, that's what makes it great. I understand your point, but a lot of us don't look at it that way. It's hard to think positive when you're in a really negative situation. Even if you're self-aware of it, you have to reprogram your mind to understand this. And that's the tough part. I'm like, even me, like I'm saying, I'm a victim of this myself. I'm talking about all of this. I'm still struggling to reprogram myself so I can think positive through the negative stuff in life. Remember in the therapy video too, I mentioned something about struggle. I'm not a religious person, but somebody told me that we need struggle because without struggle, without risk, we never grow. And they mentioned God created the devil because God wanted the best for us. So he introduced free will so we can discover our own struggles and overcome them because that's what makes us stronger. And that's just a theory if you believe in religious figures. But even if you don't, you get the point. My argument against this, though, is that in regards to your 20s being the best years of your life, yo, even in your 30s, you're going to have struggles. In your 40s, you're going to have struggles. E even in your teenage years, you had struggles. So we shouldn't be marginalizing what set of years things matter the most. It doesn't matter. Your 20s will be the greatest year of your life. Your 30s could be the greatest years of your life. You never know. Your 40s could be. You don't know. But hey, all I know is right now, things are really tough for a lot of people out there due to life circumstances. And everyone has to figure it out. Build resilience. However, you find a way to do that. Let me know what y'all think. This episode is found on Spotify and YouTube, Times Square. Hey, hey, hey. Nightmare, 7 a.m. in the morning, though. No surprise. Times Square's you and I under those lights. No disguise. Uh, don't tell me everything you wanted was a lie. All those city lights, it's an endless night. Never expected you to bring me so much life. Close my eyes too long, then it's time to say goodbye. Let's dance all night until the stars don't show glow. Till the sunrise, then we go so low. Making up for all the times that we were low. Let's make some memories before we do go. Let's dance all night until the stars don't show glow. Till the sunrise, then we go so low. Making up for all the times that we were low. Let's make some memories before we do go. Caution. Wait a moment, keep my heart locked away, it's filled with emotion Gave the key to you, right in front of you is open Hey, try your best to not leave it broken Oh, it's been a while since you know it's frozen 